Okay. Today looks like beautiful weather, so I am going to go and try and do something outside for a bit. Not what the doctor ordered. Ah, here's Malcolm. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I am staring at the MK Dunn Stadium right now. I've got a car parking space for you. If you get out of your car and stand up, you'll see where I am, because I'm, I'm standing up on a post. Oh, right, OK, hang on a sec. We've just been having an interesting conversation about energy, which actually, funnily enough, ties in with what I was thinking of talking about today, because I was reading, a, I think it was a BBC News article, where they were talking about a company who do vid vehicle to grid in Denmark. Right. And so you take your EV and you know how vehicle to grid works to try and smooth out the, the power supply. So many people are on economy seven and uh, more and more people are going to um, electric cars. But now there's, um, it's midnight and everyone starts their washing machine right. and dishwashers and everything and then- Charging their Teslas. And, then and then now there's yeah. a peak in, in that. So it's one of the more expensive times of the day for the energy providers. Some tariffs now, I think, kicking at two o'clock in the morning and. And I think in the future it will be down more to the sort of minute or five minute periods mm. uh, to get you even better savings but better for the grid. I don't like the concept of vehicle to grid because I wouldn't want to wear my car's battery out any quicker than, than, you know, they would have to give me a lot of money. Would you let them use your car battery? Yeah, I guess so, but you're right, it depends on the, the money that's coming back to you. Yeah, because it is it is wearing it out, especially if you're talking about a smaller battery like a Nissan Leaf or something. You, know, you could double your wear. Yeah. Those things don't last forever. Yeah, that's anyway. the worrying thing. At least with the test, they're a bit more actively cooled and heated, aren't they? Yes. I still don't know why Nissan Leafs don't have the 80%, 90% limits. They used to be in the. Yeah, when I got mine, I just charged it to 80% basically all the time. Yeah. And then. You're right, they got rid of it, didn't they? Yeah, we've got the 30 kilowatt hour on and it's yeah, just 100% or nothing. You'd like to think that's because their batteries just will last forever, whatever, but well, that's not the case. Not. I saw one yesterday on the, one of the groups on Facebook. Uh, they just bought it, 100% charge within 45 miles on this display. <laughs> so it's basically a new battery needed. It's how, just, how old was that? Um, I think it was one of the uh, early. 45 ones. miles? Yes. Yeah. So. That's crazy! And lots of people were saying, look, you basically bought a car that's Dodge and, and they didn't should have told you about it. Did they not check? Yeah. That would be the first thing I would want to see if I was buying a Nissan Leaf. How many battery bars yeah. were left on the side? Yeah, I think it was either four or five. See, the only way that that could happen to a Nissan Leaf, surely, is if the battery is dodgy yeah. or the owner has just been totally yeah. disregarding any kind of good battery practice. But I suppose that's where Tesla are kind of quite clever because they the owner doesn't really have to do any battery management the car will do it for you they've got a thing whereby if it goes up to 100 if you charge for 100 percent all the time it says well right, you're gonna wear your battery out you keep doing that you don't hear any stories of i've got my tesla and it's done 40,000 miles and there's only 100 miles of range left in there. we're just about to head out on the boards and i wanted to just recount a quick story there was a, another car in the lane over there right. and somebody pulled in in front of me, like millimetres in front. Unfortunately, I didn't have any cameras on, so we don't have any footage of this, but like literally so unbelievably close. And I was in cruise control and I don't have the autopilot car, so it's just cruise control, yeah. which meant that I couldn't react quickly enough to slow the car down. And if he'd been ever so slightly closer, he would have he would have knocked me, we would have had a terrible accident. Yeah, yeah. But that is the massive safety advantage of driving a car with decent regenerative braking. I would have just lifted off the accelerator, you know, instantly as he came into my field of view and then my car would have pulled back a couple of feet yeah. by the time he'd come across. And it's, it's one of the things I don't think a lot of people really appreciate how much safer one pedal driving really is because it gives you that instant braking yeah, yeah. some instant braking anyway yeah. right let's go have some fun yeah i want to get my rear windows tinted good job malcolm that's what you get for touching the wheel with your foot as you're going along just I'm in case anyone's wondering i'm more worried about my trousers you get attached to jeans don't yeah you? no th those trousers are total mate. I'm, I'm attached to these Thank you. 
I've just got to charge before he heads home and uh, although I probably don't. Right, I'm gonna try and dry this down a bit. Ah, proximity won't open the boot either, will it? For security reasons, I've turned the passive unlocking off. Apparently quite a few Tesla owners have had their cars nicked. So, I don't know if I can live with that as a security measure, because it's quite annoying but hopefully Tessie will come up with a fix of some description at some point soon. Can I borrow that towel? Is that a bit cheeky of me? I've got some pa tissue paper, but... My God, that's organization for you, that is. Probably smells of dogs. I don't care what it smells of. Thank you. Malcolm has decided to head off. He doesn't really need a charge, he just fancied a coffee, and the traffic's awful. So, I, however, am getting a charge because it means I won't have to faff around with cables at my parents' house. Yep, and it takes some getting used to remembering that I have to unlock it. Whilst it's just putting in the last few amps, this seems like a good time for me to give a few battery care tips for people with things like electric skateboards. They don't make any effort to manage the longevity of that battery. So for example, it can be fully charged and you can just leave it sitting fully charged in a warm room. The other thing is you can fully charge it and then jump on it and regen down a great big hill, which again, very much not good for the battery because it's full already and you're trying to shove more power into it. That's how regen works. Whenever I first jump on the board, I always try and avoid regening until the battery sits about 90%. Just foot brake, that's, that's what I do anyway. The other thing is it takes no account of temperature. So when it's very cold outside, again, careful with the regening, and also full power is not a great idea. Basically. What I try to do with the thing is manually manage the battery the way that a Tesla, for example, will just manage the battery anyway. And that brings me on to the second point I just wanted to quickly mention, which is I really like that new next gen Leaf, the 40 kilowatt one, but one of the downsides is that it still doesn't have a properly actively managed battery from a temperature point of view. So, it will heat up if you drive, charge, drive, charge. By that point, you're gonna have a very warm battery. It's something that Nissan are gonna to have to address at some point in the future. I know why they haven't addressed it so far, because it does keep the complexity and therefore the cost right at a minimum. On the flip side, the Nissan Leaf is one of the only electric cars I know of where people actually do complain about the speed that the battery de degrades. Tesla's on the other hand, I've done 91,000 miles and the car still says it can do 212, 213 miles when it's 90% charged, which is I think something like 5% less range than I had when it was new over three and a half years ago. So I've got no problems with that, even if there's actually a higher level of degradation there than, than the system is actually reporting for whatever reason, maybe a calibration reason or whatever, it still isn't the kind of degradation that some Nissan Leaf owners report at 30, 40,000 miles. I mean, for example, I think I'd lost about 15% of the range in my car when I sold it, my Nissan Leaf I mean, when I sold it and I had it for two and a half years, if memory serves, and I'd done 36,000 miles on it. Probably about three times the battery degradation my Tesla's got, and yet it had done less than half the miles and over a, less, a shorter period of time as well. So it is very important, managing batteries. Now there are some things that I have noticed which have been slowly changing as I've owned this car, the Tesla it doesn't seem to supercharge quite as quickly as it used to. It slows down quicker, like it's at 54 kilowatts now, and the battery's still around 60% full. So it's still quite a lot of room to go, and it's only doing 54 kilowatts, and it's a warm battery now as well. The other thing is, when it's cold, it seems to have less regen for longer, and is less keen to give you full power. You get a dotted line at the top of the speedo, which indicates a reduction in available power, and that 
will happen. Like for example, if the battery is cold and I floor it, then the dotted line will appear and then it will immediately disappear again. But it does indicate to me that the battery is aging, which I guess you'd expect it to. I certainly don't feel like I've lost any utility with the car, however. We're now more or less ready to go. Ah, Will did tell me that if just because the car's unlocked doesn't mean you can start it. You have to actually unlock the car specially. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> ah. Oh well, at least the car's more secure. Not going to bother plugging in because they supercharged. See those scratches on my back bumper? So this is what happened. We were going down a road and by the side of the road there were some cars parked. I was coming down here and I thought rather stupidly I'll stop here. And one car came in here and then a second car tried to follow and couldn't of course because there wasn't a big enough gap so it stopped there. So now I'm here, the other car's there. Obviously I you know he didn't seem to want to reverse back out of the way. So I reverse back out the way and reversing whilst trying not to bump into cars and curbs and all sorts at the front I managed to bump into the car that was waiting up here now luckily it was an extremely light bump so there was no damage to his car I just bumped into his number plate uh, and his number plate has scratched the back of my car a little bit so you know that is my get out of jail free card for for this month I think Basically, there's a little bit of an imprint of the top of the number plate. Oh. And I'm back home safe and sound. So, I hope you've all enjoyed today's vlog post and found it interesting. Remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you don't already and I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. I'm attached to these. You can still wear them. They're my best jeans. <laughs> you can still wear them. I, I tell you, I've got 95% of my jeans have got holes in. I've recently went to Tesco's and bought a bunch of cheap ones, which don't have holes. Because it was winter and my knees were getting cold. <laughs>